Hey YouTube, it's me, Brian Colonel. The next video that I've got for you guys is a knife company that I didn't think that I would actually get. It's Kaiser Knives. Now, before when I was seeing their stuff, I didn't really think that I would get any of their stuff for the sole fact that it looked a little cheap, it was a company completely based in China, and it it just looked a little off to me. There were, there were some that seemed off initially. Then I went to Blade Show a couple of years ago and uh, handled a couple of their blades and saw that they were actually pretty decent. And it was actually at that Blade Show that I ended up getting my uh, uh, Riat Horizon and uh, which is uh, another company based completely in China at which point I started opening up my horizons a little bit, no pun intended, and uh, and started thinking maybe some of these China companies aren't going to be quite so bad. So recently, I went out and bought this one, and uh, this is the Kaiser Gemini. Now, this is also probably the most overpackaged knife I have ever received. There is this box. You take it, take this out and get this box, which is a nice packaging. You could probably just keep this one, ditch the white one, or the cream beige one, whatever this is supposed to be. Uh, but yeah, so you take it out and get this. You take off the top, and what do you know? You have another package. But inside of this one, you also have uh, just like the small mini knife manualette thing. But you also get a decent microfiber cloth. It's not exactly the best microfiber cloth that, say, Custom Knife Factory would give you, but it works. It's actually a decent cloth, and it, um, and it, it'll wipe up smudges pretty well. But so, you open up this one, and you've actually got three separate pouches on the inside of it. There's like a small mini pouch on this side, and then uh, right beside it, there's uh, another one. And then uh, there is the main pouch, which actually houses the knife itself. Or at least that's how it came in mind. <clears throat> but I actually really like when a knife company will go the extra mile and give you the pouch. So that way you can protect your higher end knives. Which basically for me, anything above a hundred bucks, I'm going to want a protective pouch for it. That That's just me. If I'm paying that kind of money, I don't want to see it scratched up just because I put it in a drawer somewhere. But anyways, for the knife itself, this is the Kaiser Gemini. As for why they call it the Gemini, I don't particularly know. Um, the best I can come up with is uh, there's uh, so many different colors of blue anodizing on here that it gives you the cocktail personality disorder of Gemini. That's the best that I can come up with. But other than that, I don't really know. But so, as far as what this knife is, it is a Ray Laconico design, and it is based off of it, his custom variant of the Jasmine. And I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the Jasmine. But, um, but yeah, it's based off of his custom work, and I'm pretty sure that's it. And it, it actually does look fairly similar. Um, they did a pretty good job on it. You can clearly tell that this is a, a Ray Laconico design if you know any of his work, really. Um, a lot of his work does have this type of flair to it. Um, and overall, this is probably the best in-hand feeling knife that I own. I don't really have a knife that feels better in hand than this one. When I, when I grip it, it just m melts in my hand, it disappears, and it Cutting with it basically just feels like an extension of the hand. Um, when I was actually testing this thing, then uh, I was probably cutting in for one sitting. I was actually cutting for about three hours straight. And it wasn't until about that three hour mark that I finally started feeling fatigue in my hand. But that was due solely to the fact of uh, I've been gripping this thing for so long that it, that it felt like I was getting arthritis in my hand. I actually have yet to have that kind of success in a grip on <clears throat> in a grip on a knife in any knife in my collection. Other knives have had hot spots, 
Other knives have had discomfort in the way that they handle. Um, there, there was even one knife that I reviewed. I don't remember which one it is, but I only got that feeling of arthritis in my pointer finger and my pinky finger. I don't know where that came from, but there was something about the ergonomics of the blade that just it threw off everything in my hand. This, the only discomfort was, like I said, three hours in, I finally started getting discomfort just from gripping for so long, but there are no hot spots on this knife whatsoever. You don't even feel the pocket clip really digging in because of just how expertly made it is. So it is it is a really, really well designed blade. The The titanium handles are completely contoured, so it's nicely rounded off. There's there's no sharp edges anywhere except on the blade itself. Even the flipper tab right here, although that looks a little pointy, it's really not at all. It's nicely contoured. Um, I would like to see a little bit of jimping on, on the top of the flipper right here. And I also would like to see just a little bit more lock bar tension so that way you can get a bit of a stronger detent. But as you can see, it flips out just fine. There's there's no issues there whatsoever. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, just me personally, I would like to see a stronger detent and a, a little bit of jimping on the flipper tab to uh, um, to kind of combine with a stronger detent. But um, but with the light detent, um, you really don't need any jimping whatsoever on there. Um, it it just works out fine. As far as the coloring on on the pivot, at first I thought that was anodizing, but um, but then I saw how quickly well not quickly, but um, I ended up thinking that I'm that I dropped some food grit or something on this side, and then I I tried to get it out with a toothpick only to see that some of the the paint was actually coming off so. That's probably the only gripe about quality that I have, is that's not actual actual anodization. And you can probably see the scratch there. Uh, it's actually just painted on, and it's incredibly shiny. So, bit of a gripe there, but that's about it. Uh, the, the pocket clip actually is anodized here, and it seems to be holding up fairly well. And, uh, and I do believe the backspacer is also anodized but it's a lot more of like a pastel blue instead of like the the bright cobalt blue that you see on the rest of it <clears throat> and then also the the pocket clip is kind of in between the pastel blue and the cobalt blue so you've got like a medium in between there kind of like an electric blue or something uh, the titanium scales are bead blasted and so it gives it a, a bit of a darker look and there's also not quite a grittiness, but just something about the the titanium on here almost does have a bit of a tactility to it. So it there's just something about it that gives you grip. I can't quite explain that too well. The blade is completely flat ground with S35VN stainless steel, and it, um, and it is also stone washed. Um, kind of getting tired of seeing everything completely stone washed myself. But that's the cheapest thing for most knife makers to do, so that's what they're doing nowadays. Uh, I do wish that I could get something else other than stone washing, though. I'm, we are living in an age of stone wash hell. So there's that. Uh, the markings you do see Ray Laconico right here on the spine of the knife. Let me see if I can get that into focus. Yeah, there we go. You can see Ray Laconico right there. And then you see the Kaiser marking right here. And then you see the model number and the steel uh, right there, kind of on the shoulder there. And then on the back, you see the model name, Gemini. So that's pretty much the only markings that you actually see on the blade. So otherwise, it's actually a fairly sterile blade com compared to virtually any uh, Kershaw Kai USA uh, kind of knife that you could ever find these things uh, are marked to the moon and back typically 
Uh, I think this is actually an even worse one here. Um, yeah, this this one is just marked everywhere. But, um, but yeah, so in comparison, this is actually a fairly sterile blade. And it, I know that some of you are going to like that. Pretty much most of you are going to like that. I couldn't care less either way. Um, I feel like the company has a right to do what they, what they feel feel like with their blades. But that's just me. I'm, I'm in the minority there. Uh, let's see. They do have the lock bar insert, which you can see that here. And if you can catch it there, um, there you go. You can see the steel right along there. They've actually extended the lock bar into, well not the lock bar, the, the lock bar insert into an over travel. So you can't hyper extend the lock bar at all. Uh, nice feature. Uh, really, it, it doesn't make a difference to me because I don't really overextend my blades at all. Uh, but then again, for, for some, I guess it could be a bonus because if they're not thinking about it, they might overextend it a little bit. Yeah. To each their own, I guess. But it is a good feature to have just to, as a bit of a sign of quality. Other Other brands don't really do that on cheaper knives. You you don't really see higher end knives without the over travel stop, but so that's there. I could do with it or without it, but yeah. Let's see, fit and finish overall is actually really really nice. Um, the the backspacer here is really flush. You do feel a transition, but keep in mind this is only a hundred and seventy dollar knife, um, so you can't exactly expect flawless seamless transitions on everything but otherwise it is completely flush and it, um, and there's not going to be any hot spots there uh, the only fit and finish qu um, quality issue that I would have is like I said before um, the pivot is more painted than anodized and if they were if they're doing color on the pivot I'd much rather see that they do anodization because um, because that makes sure that it's going to last a little bit longer. You're not going to have to worry about it quite as much. And it, heaven forbid you take a screwdriver to it. It's not going to immediately wash out that pivot. Um, I've had to tighten it down a couple of times already. And um, yeah, I've, I've already started to lighten up the inside of that pivot hole. So there's that. Um... Uh, this knife is actually incredibly smooth as far as the bearing system goes because this is on bearings. I don't remember if it was ceramic bearings or steel bearings. I want to say that they were steel bearings though. But uh, if I'm wrong, I'll probably annotate it later. But um, yeah, I do believe that these were on caged steel bearings. But yeah, they are incredibly smooth. Um, I would actually say that this rivals the uh, the smoothness of uh, of my custom knife factory Sequoia which anybody who's ever even at the very least seen a review of one of these things these are basically one of the smoothest knives on the market um, everybody who's ever gotten a Sequoia knows just how smooth these things are these basically turn into a finger guillotine if you don't release the lock bar insanely quickly and this little $170 knife actually easily gives it a run for its money. The only reason why it doesn't completely drop down when when you release the lock bar is because that blade ain't big enough for it. This is a 3 inch blade and it, it's only about an eighth of an inch thick at its thickest point. <clears throat> On top of that it is fully flat ground so it doesn't really even have much of any flats to add to the weight. So. Yeah, this is a fairly light blade, and you're not going to get much of the drop-down weight from this that you would get from virtually any other knife in my collection that would be able to do that. This is also what I would at least consider a fairly light knife. This is the ZT0801, and it, that has enough weight to be drop-down smooth. Also has another half inch, and it's also got flats that have not been ground in order to kind of give the knife a little bit more weight. But yeah, so this is a very, very light knife. 
you put it in your pocket, it just disappears. You really don't notice at all how how this knife is sitting in your pocket, unless it, uh, the pocket clip snags on something unexpectedly. But beyond that, you really forget that this thing is even in your pocket. Uh, speaking of the pocket clip itself, it is a, just a, a bent titanium pocket clip that has also been anodized, but uh, but it is quite nicely done. So that way, again, it it just disappears in your pocket. It's just the right size, so that way it disappears in your hand. Um, it's not too tall, so that way it doesn't just dig into your hand. Um, <clears throat> I've actually seen other knives that, uh, particularly the one that I'm carrying right now, which uh, this will be reviewed in the future, uh, the Guardian Tactical Helix. It's a, a fairly, fairly low-profile clip as far as the height, but as far as right here, it duck builds up just a little bit too much to the point where you grab it and it, it's kind of like the FU pocket clip that um, that Jim Skeleton was talking about in the Microtech DOC. That just digs into you quite horribly. So that is a design flaw there. This doesn't suffer from that. And this is like half the cost of this thing. So. Kaiser just seems to be hitting it out of the ballpark with their, um, with all of their designs, whether it's a collaboration with Ray Laconico, or uh, or if they're doing the uh, just their standalone models. It really doesn't matter what they're doing. It seems like they're just hitting it out of the ballpark with all of them. Uh, when I actually went to the to the Blade Show just this past summer. Uh, I was able to handle quite a few of their knives, and pretty much all of them, they're hitting out, hitting it out of the ballpark, and it, they're they're keeping it at a pretty reasonable price range for what you're getting as well. So, overall impressions, if this thing were just a a hair bigger, had a bigger detent with a, a little bit of jimping on this flipper tab. This knife could easily be my favorite knife in my entire collection, and that's it even without changing the um, the pivot bolt into being titanium, so that way you could anodize it. Because um, I do believe the, that the hardware is all just steel. But so even without doing that, just to like I said, make it a little bit bigger, detent stronger, a little bit of jimping on the flipper this would easily be my favorite blade in my entire collection. So I actually look forward to getting more Kaiser knives in the future because uh, I want to see if this was just a fluke or if I can, could actually get repeated quality with uh, other knives from the, the collection. Probably the next Kaiser knife that I'm going to be looking at getting it would be the Intrepid but that'll probably be a little ways off because I've got other plans for knives in my collection in the future. So, I'll cut it off right here. Don't really have much else to say. Um, so, as always, stay safe.